Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship at JKPC. Oh, Vicki, would you hand me those shirts right there, please? Um, we're very excited. You'll see a waterfall on the side here. Heavenly Grace just finished their vacation Bible school. Ours will be ramping up next week. We got our t-shirts in, kids, adults. I want to thank, we have about 70 volunteers. We have about 105 kids. We're very excited. Lots of um, decorating will happen this week. So if you want to help out, I'll be starting 9.30 every morning, except for 4th of July. Is Jim Call here? Jim? Did you? Yeah, and so anyone can help with decorations. We have stuff to do, um, putting tissue paper up for fun little fireflies or putting uh, posters up. And if you want to do some creative things at home, look at this. Look what Jim and brought in. This is, Sandy made this. So Jim said for sure he holds a flame for Sandy, whether it's a literal or figurative flame, because our, our, <laughs> our camp is Camp Firelight, so we're very excited. Thank you. You can still um, sign up to bring goodies during BBS week for adults, as well as cupcakes for next uh, Sunday. So thank you so much for that. Um, today, Pastor Garrett will have the last class in a series about um, what makes you happy is not what you think or expect. And if you haven't, have not gone to any of them, no worries. You are still welcome to join us. It'll be 11 o'clock in room D. That would be wonderful. And I think we're going to get right into the call to worship now. Pastor Garrett, when you come on up. I didn't hear. Did you mention what all this other decoration is? I did a blurb that the Heavenly Grace did their BBS. Okay, yeah. So that's why uh, it looks like we have the creation going on. So it's pretty cool. I what uh, they've been able to do. And then, yeah, the VBS here is just amazing. So it's always a lot of fun, you know, for, for people. So if you uh, want to join in, this is uh, the time to do it. Well, we are glad you're here as uh, we start off a, a new series that I'm uh, going to be doing on the Ten Commandments. And it talks about, you know, how can we uh, live our lives in a way that God intended so you're starting off right, you're starting off the week here at church, and if you're watching online, uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, our prayer is that God would speak to you and help you as uh, we grow in Christ. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you so much that this is uh, the time that you have made and you've called us together, and I pray that you would bless those who are here, who are watching online, uh, that your spirit would speak to their hearts. And that you would help us to draw close to you, the one who brings life and light uh, and joy to our lives. So may you use this worship to glorify your name and, and bless us as we are now in your presence. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Welcome and good morning, everybody. Here. We're gonna we're gonna come together. It's a warm day, isn't it? We're gonna come together today, and of course, as a church family, I'm always so grateful that we get to all just worship together every week. It's so wonderful. Um, this first song that we're gonna sing is about God's ability to make a way where there seems to be no way to provide for our needs, even in the midst of impossible circumstances. And it's a reminder we can trust God's provision. So let's stand. And after we do that song, we're going to be doing a new song that we haven't done before, but it's simply called Praise, because that's what we're here for. You are here, moving in our midst. We worship you. We worship you. You are here, working in this place. We worship You are here, moving in our midst. 
right, would everybody please be seated? There's going to be an installation and ordination of new elders and deacons after the kids' message, so that's when the passing of peace will be. So right now, kids, come on up. It's your turn. Is that Kane? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, Jimmy. Yeah, come on up. Come on up. Hey, I missed you. Good to see you. Ella, I missed you. Look at you. Look at that cool outfit. All right. Hi, Harwigs. All right. So, they have, how about this? Come closer to me up here. Come on up here, Sam. All right. Have a seat. Have a seat. All right. So, we talked last week about trusting in God. Here, have a seat. Have a seat, Gabriel. Or you can stand up too. That's good. So, I know the water. Okay, everyone first look at the waterfall. Isn't that cool? I, and there's birds. Oh, wait till you see our VBS. We're going to even have more animals. Flamingos. It, it's fake. It's not real? Yeah. Oh, come on. Sam. Shh. Okay, okay. But it's very creative. All right. Yes, I see it. I see it. Okay, now you think my kid's message would be about the waterfall, but it's a little different today. So um, we're talking about trusting in God this summer. And there's a beautiful Bible verse. It's small but powerful. Jerry, would you help me with that one, please? And everyone can help say it. It's going to be there any second. I can just feel it. I trust it's there. There it is. Ready? Whenever I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Psalm 56.3. Now, it's easy to trust God. It's easy to trust people, too, when you can see what's happening. But today, today I brought along what did I bring along flashlights okay so we're going to turn the lights down a little lower we'll look at that afterwards too okay we can take a photo with it the flamingo is it a real fish okay here we go have a seat all right so and andrew could you make it a little darker okay you guys okay still all right ella can i borrow you here all right so how many when it has been dark and you have a flashlight how many of you do those little puppet shows with your hands let's see if here, watch this. Ella, will you show them? See if you, can we turn that? Thank you so much. All right. All right, can you do a little puppet show? Let's see if the kids see it. <gasps> do you see it, guys? Well, it's, it's here. here, go a little closer. Go a little closer. Or I'll go a little farther. Oh, there you go. All right, can you see that? Can you make a bunny? Let's see if you can make a bunny. Okay. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> this is unrehearsed. Okay, so flashlights are cool, but... Yeah, do you want to see it too? But now watch this. Ella, turn around and face the wall. Can you see her shadow? Can you make your shadow look bigger? Let's see, put your arms bigger. Oh, let's see, come back towards me. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. It is like a cross, isn't it? Sometimes, who's ever been afraid of a shadow? Like you walk around the corner and you see your shadow. Hold on one second. I know, hold on one second. So here's my short but sweet message today. So sometimes shadows can be scary, right? Ella, make that big shadow again. But why is the shadow being made? Because, of me. because You're right, because of me. <laughs> but where is the light? Is the light in front of her or behind her? Behind her. Behind her. So now watch this. What happened? Ella, do you see a shadow right now? Turn around. Right, now turn around. Now do you see the shadow? Oh, oh that's Jim. <laughs> And you do not need to be afraid of Jim. He's awesome. Okay, so the kid's message point is this. When you're looking at the light, you don't see the shadows. Sometimes we have problems. We're afraid of things. And they can even be bigger than we think sometimes, depending upon how far we are away from the light. But when we trust God, when we put God first, that's when we know that we're in the right direction, okay? How about this? Let's talk more about it in Sunday school. So let's say a prayer. This is a repeat after me prayer. I didn't hear you. This is a repeat after me prayer. Father God, help me to trust you to walk in the light and put you first. Everyone said, a oh, amen. All right. Uh, Carolyn's going to take the kids. Don't run to Sunday school, and I'll join you right after the installation. Follow Carolyn. Thank you, Nancy. That's great. Uh, well, uh, we're going to do an installation ordination, but before we do that, uh, we want to say thank
thank you to the outgoing officers. So if uh, Stan is here, uh, Nanette, uh, Renee, Ashari, if you're here, come on up. Just um, we have a little uh, gift for you, and we want to thank you. So, well, you get all four of them. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Ashari and, uh, and Renee, Nanette, Stan, they've all been wonderful. You've been great. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, you know, they serve behind the scenes, but especially the deacons, I think, do a lot uh, that is unseen. And so we appreciate uh, all, all of them. And so if you see them... Uh, you can give uh, thanks to them, and we really appreciate uh, you. And then we're now going to welcome in or uh, ordain and install our new elders and deacons. So if uh, I'm going to ask, let's see, let me make sure I have the right list. Mark uh, for elders. Mark, Sandy, Ewan, uh, Sandy, Diane, uh, Ellis, Jeff. Dave, Sue, and Vicki, you're, you're all being uh, installed or reinstalled. So come on up, because you have to be up here as I ask uh, questions. And then for deacons, we have Joy, Shauna, uh, Ellie, Judy, Miriam, uh, Sue Ann, King Irwin, Nancy, and not Nancy Maxwell, and Tina. So if you're here, come on up. And we're going to, uh, uh, let's see, is Ewan here? Yeah. I don't see Ewan. And then Vicky is also not here, but Vicky isn't here because she had a fall and she's really in a lot of pain and she couldn't make it here this morning because of that. So we'll need to continue to keep her in prayer. So we're actually missing uh, Ewan this morning. So it, and Allison Washington. Okay. Um, but uh Ewan and uh, Vicky will uh, need to be ordained and installed. Uh, the people you see in front of you are uh, going to be installed. So they've been ordained already, but this is our, our new great group. And so there's the questions of ordination, which I will ask them, and they will respond hopefully in the positive. Um, but these are all the uh, questions that you've heard before. So, uh, all of you as incoming leaders, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. And do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church, universal, and God's word to you? If so, say, I do. And do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, say, I do. And will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? If so, say, I will. And will you be governed by our church's polity? Will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, say, I will. And will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbor, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, say, I will. And do you promise to further the peace, the unity, and the purity of the church? If so, say, I do. And then I, I love this, this last one. Will you seek to serve the people with energy and intelligence, imagination, and love. If so, say, I will. I will. Yeah. And see, and we, we know that they will, because look at this great group of, of people. So uh, I'm very, you know, feel honored and privileged as I'm looking uh, at you that, you know, I get to serve with you as you come on 
uh, to continue the, the ministry, both as elders and, and as deacons. And so uh, now we're going to ask the uh, elders to respond to this question, and then we'll do the deacons. Uh, so uh, you elders, so that would be uh, Mark and Sandy, Diane, uh, Jeff, Dave, and Vicki, and Sue. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? And will you share in government and discipline, serving the governing bodies of the church, and in your ministry, will you show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. And then for the deacons, so that'd be uh, Joy, Shauna, Ellie, Judy, Miriam, Sue, Nancy, and Tina. Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your own ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. Okay, terrific. Well, let, let me pray for you. Dear God, thank you so much for this amazing group of men and women that you have called to serve uh, this uh, upcoming uh, term. And we know that not only do you have a JKPC in your hands, but uh, you are helping to further the ministry by uh, these men and women that we are installing this morning. So I, I do pray that you would give them uh, strength and wisdom and love, uh, patience and energy and intelligence, imagination as they uh, lead us in this next year. And may uh, we be uh, a church that appreciates each of their gifts. So again, Lord, we thank you so much for putting your hand on uh, this group and ask that you would continue to, to bless us through them. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen. So I have a question now for you as a congregation uh, because, you know, the, you've heard them respond and, and now this is uh, the questions that we have uh, for you. Do you, as members of JKPC, accept these people as deacons and elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. And you agree to encourage them to respect their decisions, to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. If so, say, we do. We do. Do you know what you just agreed to? <laughs> uh, encourage them, respect them, uh, follow them as they serve. Because sometimes... You know, people don't want to lead because when you lead, you can get shot at or you can get, you know, uh, you have a target on you. And so um, as these people step forward, uh, it is extra important that we uh, encourage and uh, appreciate them. Uh, not to say that they'll always be perfect, uh, although some of them might be, um, but to, to see them as people called by God. And in that way, we're all strengthened together. So again, we, we thank you for being up here. And so now we're going to stand and greet one another um, and say hello to them. Well, let's give them a round of applause. Too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's take a moment and, and greet one another. Hey. Hey. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. thank you. All right, great. Oh, that's great. Thank you.
All right, thank you for doing that. Uh, we're going to get ready to do our, our prayers and our sharing. So I think, oh, you got that? Great. So as uh, you're kind of finding your seat, just uh, for me, a couple of things, one, one a praise and um, one sort of a, an update. Uh, when I was away, I was in Southern California and got to spend time with uh, the two daughters who lived down there and plus the grandkids. And uh, it's just, you know, so wonderful to, to especially see the grandkids and how quickly they're growing up. So when we gathered together uh, that particular week, uh, my son and my granddaughter are, are born two days apart. So we get to celebrate uh, two birthdays. So uh, my son gets to choose his, and he cho chose, like, Japanese and sushi, and then my granddaughter chose hamburgers. So uh, it's like, oh, yeah, hamburgers. It's like, great. Because uh, when my kids are growing up, we take them to get hamburgers, and they thought, oh, you're the greatest parents. You know, we kept them far away from anything expensive. Um, uh, and, and then, um, yeah, just, I guess on Tuesday, I was driving here to work and got rear-ended on the um, freeway. You know, someone wasn't paying attention, and he was stopping go traffic, so I don't know what he was doing. He was, I, I think he was looking at his phone, and he just ran right into me, and so... Uh, kind of working on my car right now. But um, you usually think, you know, people pay attention. They're not going to hit you. And now I think everybody's going to hit me, you know. So I uh, you know, stress out, you, you know, driving. And it's like, oh, I hope I make it. Um, but uh, anyway, life is, is like that. So I want to take a moment. If you have any prayers or praises, uh, just raise your hand, introduce yourself, and I see a hand in the back, and then over here. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Larry Woods. Uh, a few weeks ago, I talked about my, uh, uh, Carol, my daughter-in-law, yeah. Um, and about a deal, a scare with cancer, they had the complete um, they took it all out, opened her up, took it all out, and it came back, and for some reason, everything was negative. So uh, they don't know if she had a false positive on the initial test or whatever, but they took the lump out, and the lump, everything was negative. So we're really grateful for that. Wow, that's great. I'd like prayers for my sister, uh, Patricia. Her husband has been dealing with bone cancer now for probably four or five years, and the situation is getting uh, uh, pretty bad at this point. So that's for Patricia's husband? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's his name? Dave. Dave, okay. This. Um, in the back, also. Hi, uh, my, my name's Mark Polson. Um, I have a big joy. Um, this week, my daughter Becky was offered a new job, and she's moving to Orange County. So, <laughs> so. hi, Diane Mukherjee. Um, two requests for prayers. So, my dad, Ernest Wirt, he's been struggling with his health for quite a while, and we finally got him moved down to. Um, uh, assisted living over here at Creekview, so it's been nice to have him closer. He's making really slow progress, so just continued prayers for him. And then a second for a colleague of mine, um, her husband, his name is Dusty Rhodes, um, is dealing with some neck cancer, and so she asked if we would please uh, help have prayers for him as he goes through this process. I'm sorry, Dan, what was his name? Dusty Rhodes, okay. R-H-O-D-E-S. And, and then what was your dad's name? My dad, Ernest Wirt, W-I-R-T. Okay. Ernie, thank you. Uh, 
Diana McIntyre, continued prayers for Marlene as she heads into her second week of radiation. I'm Tom Fox. Uh, prayers of Thanksgiving that uh, Carol is home and that uh, Pete is still standing, taking care of her, and uh, just continued prayers for them. And also, uh, the Weehees are not here today because they're new grandparents. Uh -huh. so, Sue can give you the details. I don't have them. I forgot the name, but it's a beautiful little baby boy. Samuel Eric, that's right. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, Judy Spurrett, I want to ask continued prayers for my uh, sister-in-law. She's had heart issues and quite a few different um, problems, and today they're moving her out of the hospital. We don't know where yet, anywhere from Antioch to San Jose. So anyway, prayers for that, and then I had to have my little doggy Daisy put down, 11 years old. Um, and that, it was your, your pet? Yeah, Daisy, oh. my dog. Okay, your yeah. dog, oh. Yeah, she's been ill for going on almost three months. So, oh. Yeah, they okay. think it might have been cancer. Okay. So, I'm sorry, my pen was having problems. So, what was the first thing you said, Judy? Uh, sure, my sister-in-law, Shirley. Sister, oh, oh, Shirley, okay. Yeah, she's been in the hospital all week, and now they're uh, transferring her. Okay, yeah, thank you. That's safer. And then, Tom, I missed the first prayer that you were mentioning. Carol Peterson. Oh, Carol Peterson. Back in the hospital. All right. Back in her care home. Okay. Okay. I guess I should have got a pencil in the first place. All right, anything else? It's a lot of prayers. Um, and then we, we send out the uh, requests or the prayer updates. So, you know, it makes a, a difference. And so I think like uh, Mark is talking about Becky, I know that it's a praise, but it's also uh, a prayer because she's moving to Orange County. And that's little bit farther away. It's not New York, but it's still uh, away from the family, so that's always uh, a bit of a shift. And then we remember to pray for uh, VBS as well, uh, and for Vicky as she heals, and, uh, and all those that are suffering, you know, pain and loss. I know that there might be other of you that have things that are going on, and we'll, you know, take a, take a moment to acknowledge that as well. So let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you are um, aware of everything going on in our lives and the things that bring us joy and the things that are on our hearts that sometimes weigh us down and, and make life tougher. But we come knowing that you said, give you our cares and our concerns uh, and also to bring you our praise and our thanks uh, so we do thank you for uh, Larry's good report about Carol being uh, negative in the test results uh, for Becky's new job. Um, and we, we thank you for the, the way that the VBS has gone for Heavenly Grace, and we pray that you would be a part of uh, our VBS as that's coming up. Thank you that the Weehees get to be uh, grandparents adding in a, a new grandchild and so we pray for all of our kids and our grandkids and ask that you would uh, bless them all and we do pray as we think of of loss uh, whether it's you know p things that are going on in our lives maybe it's a loss of relationships or loss of security or, or maybe a loss of something valuable, or, or we've lost a number of people in, in our church. We continue to pray for the family of the Snowdens, of the Cooks, and the Mitchells, um, all who have uh, dealt with uh, the loss of a loved one. 
And uh, we, we pray for uh, Patricia, uh, Patricia's husband, Dave, as dealing with bone cancer. And uh, we pray for uh, Diane's, uh, uh, David, uh, dad's health. Uh, glad that he's closer to home. Uh, but pray that you'd be with him and be with Marlene, uh, be with uh, uh, Judy Pruitt's uh, sister-in-law, uh, Shirley, be with uh, Carol Peterson, and uh, we ask that you would also be with uh, Vicki as she is suffering from a fall, and uh, we, we do pray that you would be with all of those that are dealing with with hurts and, and pains, and we ask that you would help us to remember that you are there in the, in the midst of both joy, but especially our sorrow when we feel the, the pain or the hurt and uh, wondering if you are there, if you, if you see. And so I pray that by your spirit, you would comfort, you would heal, you would reassure and even bring a sense of, of hope and light into dark places. And we pray for our, our church as the PNC continues to work looking for uh, a pastor. We're bringing in new leaders, and we know that uh, you are definitely not done with JKPC, that you have a, a wonderful future. And you have things for us to do now, even before a uh, new pastor is installed. So I pray that you would help us to be aware of the things that are going on around us. Um, in the midst of our pain, may we continue to listen for your voice and for what you might have for, for us. And moving forward, uh, even in the darkness, to look for that light uh, that shines, even if that light is sometimes dim. So we, we just take a moment and... Um, lift up our, our silent prayers to you. So God, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you'll never leave us or forsake us. So bless us, I pray, in the name of Christ, amen. Uh, this morning I'm gonna ask uh, Vicki to come on up and to read our, our verses for the morning. Thank you. From Exodus 20 and their selected verses, the life directives uh, put God first. Then God gave the people all these instructions. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's house or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. So this, this morning, uh, I'm calling this uh, series uh, Life Directives, and it has to do with uh, the Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments, do you remember, did it come, who did it come to? What leader? Moses. Moses. Okay, good. And uh, did that come before they left Egypt or after they left Egypt? After, okay. Um, and so part of this is the Lord heard the people's cry for help when they were in Egypt, and he rescued them. And uh, I like this verse. Uh, it's from uh, the uh, prophet. It says, uh, then, then God gave all the, these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Uh, from the place of your slavery. And we hear this in Hosea. God says, when Egypt was a child, I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. And so it, it says that when he was in Egypt, you know, I, I was aware, and I called him. Why? Because uh, I loved him. And so as we see the commands, 
Uh, sometimes we, we think, well, God's just trying to take away our fun, but it really is a reflection of the, the love of God uh, for us. And so when we go through these, uh, they're not meant to be restrictive, but it's to reflect God's care, his love, his concern. And, and that's why he gave these to the people of Israel, brought them out of Egypt, they're in the wilderness, and then he provides a framework for them to, to move forward. And, you know, sometimes we, we look at any kind of law or rule and, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, I want my freedom. Uh, but we need to think, well, if it's about love and care, then maybe a, a better way of looking at this is, uh, you know, if someone says to you, don't touch that, that's hot. You know, and some of your kids, you can tell them that, and they'll touch it anyway. But when you say that, are you trying to restrict them or are you trying to be mean to them? Uh, no, you're, you're trying to warn them. You're trying to protect them. And you tell them, stay away from this danger because I don't want you getting hurt. So it goes back to being love. And so when we look at these uh, commandments, again, we need to remember that this is God's way of helping to uh, protect us. Now, you, you all know, heard of the Ten Commandments. Uh, how many of you can recite them? Okay, one. <laughs> uh, now it's I'm, and it's okay if if you can't. But I was trying to think, what's an easy way to remember? Because it's a lot of verses. So when Vicky read uh, the Ten Commandments, you know, I edited out a lot of you know other things that went along with it. And so I was thinking, well, how can we remember it more easily? And so I came up with. A uh, simple way of saying these. So no other gods, uh, no false images of God. Uh, honor my name, honor the Sabbath, honor your parents. Uh, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't covet. And so it's, if you can kind of remember, you know, no, no, honor, 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 um, no those five things. It might be easier, uh, but so I, this is what I put together to try to, you know, remember. So no, no, honor, 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 and then, you know, don't do these things. And so it might be as we look at these Ten Commandments, you know, try to find a way to, to put those in, in, in your mind. It's, it's a, there's a funny, I don't know if it's a funny joke, but... Uh, um, it's a, it's a Christian church joke. It's, uh, to uh, Betty and Bob, uh, they show up, you know, Christmas and Easter, but they came one Easter, and afterwards the pastor says, that would be nice, you know, to see you more often. And Bill says, well, at least, uh, you know, Betty and I uh, keep the Ten Commandments. He goes, really? Wow, that's great. This is... Yeah, Betty keeps eight of them, and I keep two of them. Yeah. So, uh, so it's, but it's not pick and choose, but it's at least if you know what they are, you have a shot. Um, so it's uh, command number one, uh, you must not have any other God but me. Uh, so what does this mean, no other gods? Because it says, you know, God, and it's like, well, what does that look like for us? And uh, it might help be helpful this is from Adam Hamilton, who uh, is someone who studies this and theologian, pastor. A God is defined as the thing that shapes our identity, our values and actions, or serves as a source of hope. Uh, so, so our God is, is really shaping who we are, what we think, and even in what we hope for. And our God can be defined as a thing that occupies our mind, our heart, is the focus of, of our uh, life. And so those can be definitions of what God is. So uh, for us, you know, God can be a job, it can be health, looks, reputation, possessions, popularity, food, drink, home, car, and now social media, technology, 
family and friends. So if you look at that list, these are not bad things. But if it becomes, any of these things become the focus or it shapes who you are, what you think, how you act, uh, you know, then it, it becomes a, a God to you. And you, so you need to think about, well, what is really important in my life? And command number, you must have no other God but me. So how do we live this out? And the simple way of saying no other gods is a negative way. Uh, the positive way of saying it is put God first. And scripture, of course, says in everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. And this has always been one of, uh, you know, my life verses and one that I've always loved to, to quote. And it also says this in Mark 12, and you might know this, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. So this is, you know, one of the, um, you know, main commandments that uh, Jesus s says is a way of kind of reaffirming this, this first commandment. And so putting God first, easy to say, well, what, what does that look like? And I want to share some, uh, something that uh, Rick Warren came up with. He's, he was a former pastor of Saddleback in Southern California. And uh, he put a lot of things together in acronyms. So how do we put God first? And it's F-I-R-S-T. And so the, the first one, the F stands for finances. It says, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. And, and so a lot of theologians and uh, pastors, and if you look at the Bible, the number one competitor to, to God is, is money. And so it's a good place to start is, you know, how do you look at money? And even, you know, God says tithe, and the purpose of tithing is to teach you to put God first in your lives. Because it talks about, you know, giving something that is worth something, but you're giving it to God because you, you honor him and, and God is more important uh, than money. And if we look at Mark 12, the uh, story of the poor widow putting uh, pennies in the offering, and Jesus goes, you know, look at this woman. Um, she didn't give much, but what she gave was all that she had. And so for us, as we look at, at finances, it's not how much you give, it's really, well, how sacrificial is it? Because you could give a lot of money, but it's just out of your uh, excess. Uh, you know, that counts some. But if it really stretches you, if, it, if you can't afford it, but you give it anyway, you know, God notices that. So he's, he's looking at things uh, maybe different than, than we are. So we honor God by giving him the first part of your income. And then he will fill your barns to overflow. And so he's saying, if you can't outgive God. So if, if you're trusting God and you give your finances, uh, even beyond what you're comfortable with, you know, God will find a way of, of honoring that and blessing you. And I'm not saying this as like financial advice. Like if you give $100, God's not going to say, oh, well, $200 is going to show up in your bank account next week. Uh, maybe it's money, but it could be blessing in, in other ways uh, and further down the road. It's, and the whole thing is just developing faith and, and trust in God. And, so, uh, and I told you, I didn't start tithing until I was a preaching pastor because I had to get up and say, you know, this is what God says, and I'm not going to tell you this if I'm not doing it. Well, I could, but then... I'd probably get in trouble from the boss. So I, if, uh, if I'm telling you to do something, I, I always um, try to do that. And uh, that, that's what God intends. So look at your finances. And then your interests. Uh, it says this, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. 
So putting God first in the things that, that you do, the, uh, what, what uh, you, you do outside of maybe work, is it helpful, is it glorifying to God, and is it something you think is, is helpful? So it says eat or drink. So I'm thinking, well, does this look like it glorifies God? Well, maybe, but it could be a str- If this is your diet, that's not a good diet. And, you know, it's like, this may be a harder choice, but you have to say, well, what, what glorifies God? What makes you, you know, more healthy? Because the healthier you are, the more you can serve God better. So, you know, eating well. Um, you'll notice in that other slide, potato chips wasn't in it because I love potato chips and potato chips are not a sin. So, um, uh, but, uh, you know, trying to eat the right thing uh, it makes you better. And so you have to ask, are, are your interests, you know, something that you feel like, yeah, life is good and God is good. Uh, or, you know, after you've done something, it's like, oh man, that sucked the life out of me. And, and some of you, you're way too much on social media, you know, watch way too much TV. And the joke is, well, no one ever got up from 10 hours of TV and go, oh man, that was, that was great. You know, I, I feel so energized and I'm ready to take on the world. It's like, no, you don't. Um, you know, you can enjoy it a little bit, but so nothing wrong with anything in its right place. But if you're doing something that you just know, you know, this is not helping my life. You know, then you've got to step away. And not only do you look at what you're doing, I like what Philippians says, don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. So not only are you looking at, are your interests uh, helping you in your life? Do they honor God? It's, are you looking beyond uh, yourself as well? And that leads to the R. So F is finances, I is interest, R is relationships. Godly people are careful about the friends that they choose. So who, who are your friends? Are they, are they you know, helpful friends, good friends, godly friends? It says, blessed are the, is the one who obeys the law of the Lord, and he doesn't follow the advice of evil people. He doesn't make a habit of doing what sinners do. He doesn't join in with those who make fun of the Lord and his law. So if you're around people that don't honor God, um, it's, it's not to say you can avoid them, but who are your close friends? Who are the people that you spend time with? Who are the people you share your life with? And those are the people that you know, should be going in the same direction that you are with, with God. Um, so like I said, you might have uh, colleagues or neighbors or coworkers who may not be the best people, but also those should not be your, your close friends. Um, so choose friends that, you know, again, you know, give, give life. That you, when you're around them, you, you go away thinking, yeah, that, I am so grateful to God for, for, for these people. And uh, if, if you're not, if, they're, if you spend time with them and you go, well, you know, I don't think that's helpful to me, then you need to step away because those relationships are important. And so... Um, it's important. If you don't have good friends, one of the problems might be you're not a good friend. Because I think if you're a good friend, good friends come to you. You know, if you're always complaining and backbiting and critical, you're probably not going to have the kinds of friends that you would want to have. So that's why it says clothe yourselves with tender-hearted, compa- uh, tender-hearted mercy Kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. If, if you're a good person and you're great to be around, you're a good friend, you're going to attract uh, good people. So, you know, look at the quality of your friends and, you know, maybe look at who you are. And remember to make allowance for other people's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Because friends are, are going to uh, hurt you even unintentionally and if you keep, keep score, you'll eventually push them away. So forgiveness is really important. And I, I compare it to, to 
dancing. Because if you're you know, square dancing or uh, other kind of you know, dancing where you're not next to each other, you're going to have a harder time stepping on their foot. But if you're you know, slow dancing or doing something where you're close, the chance of you stepping on their foot is really high. And so you have to be willing to kind of have your foot stepped on if you have somebody close. Same thing with relationships. The closer they are, the more they have the chance to hurt you. But then that's important to forgive and, and move on. So that's R. And then schedule. Uh, what's your schedule look like? You know, what are you doing with your time? Um, make the most of every opportunity. Understand what the Lord wants. So we put together the schedule, but, you know, do you pray, you know, God, is this a good use of, of my time? Because some, you know, we all have different amounts of money uh, or skill to use, but we all have the same amount of time. And it's important to, to use what it is that God wants you to do. So seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and God will give you everything you need. And I like this in Mark. Uh, it's talking about Jesus. Before daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Jesus started off his day uh, with, with prayer uh, as a way of uh, keeping his, his life aligned with God. And so if you say, sorry, God, I, you know, I just don't have any time to read the Bible, don't have time to pray, uh, then your, your schedule isn't what you need it to be, right? It's, it's important to always start with that. And that's what I try to do. I don't always get it right because sometimes I get up and I'm thinking about you and the stuff I need to get done. And then I get on my computer and it's like a, uh, an hour later. So I, I need to always try to get to the scripture because it's not all about me. It's not all about you. And if we start with God, he helps us to remind us of that. And to give time to God and to others is a part of your schedule. And if you want to talk about this some more, our Sunday school today is exactly about this, uh, giving your time away. And then T is trouble. In trouble, lean on God. It says, then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. So call on me when you're in trouble. Uh, and some, some of us hate that. You know, it's like, you know, I can solve my own problems. I don't need God. I'm going to pull myself up on my own bootstraps. And so we just figure stuff out. And then the only time we talk to God is uh, Hail Mary. When we've tried everything else, it's like, well, nothing I've done works. So, okay, God, it's yours. It's like, why do we do that? It's like we, we small or medium we, we need to just bring everything to, to God uh, so it doesn't stay uh, with us. So dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow. God's bringing you trouble so that you can turn to God, trust him, it increases your faith. And you know what happens if you don't do that? He's going to keep giving you more trouble. <laughs> you know, he's going to keep raising the temperature until you finally come back to God. So if you don't like uh, a lot of uh, problems or if things persist, maybe it's because you haven't come to God. Because God goes, okay, we'll, we'll go your way. We'll just wait until you, you mess up so bad and you're so down deep that you'll finally come to me. But I'm encouraging you, when trouble comes, turn to God sooner than later. Does anybody know what these are? Have, have any of you seen this? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, oh, look at those colored lights. I wonder what those are. Um, those are what? Dashboard. Da dashboard, and, and they do what? Trouble. trouble. Yeah, trouble or warning lights. Um, and so some of you know what those are, and some of you have no idea. So if you have no idea, go and look at your manual and, and know what those mean. Um, but a, a warning sign for us that we're not trusting God, the light that goes on. It isn't, I, I wish there was a little light 
that, you know, maybe on your forehead, beep, beep, I'm, I'm not trusting God. But what does it look like? It, it's worry. So if you're constantly worried, uh, then that's the warning light that you're not trusting God. So don't worry, but put God's kingdom first. Do what he wants you to do. Then all those things will also be given to you. So if you're a worrier, that's your warning light that you're not trusting God. So put God first. Finances, interests, relationships, schedule, troubles. And, and why should we do this? Because I think when we live this out, you know, our life gets bigger, uh, our ability to love and receive love, it just helps us to be the people that God created us to be. So um, this verse from uh, the message, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Uh, come to me, get away, from, uh, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And so um, it's all about living in the love of God, and that's my encouragement to you as we look at this uh, first command. Uh, no other gods, uh, put God first. And as we do so, I think, you know, the love and the life and all that you want um, will become more part of, of you. So I, I pray that God would bless you in that. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your word to us. And a reminder that, that you come to give life and give it to the full. And you, you don't come to, to restrict us and to take us uh, to places to take away our happiness, but really to fulfill the joy uh, of living. So may you help us to do that today and every day. And ask us the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Garrett. Great, great advice these days. Um, let's just stand and make this song our prayer. I think you know this song. Seek ye first.
go out with this song, which comes from Hebrews 11.8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as, as, as an inheritance. Ooh, that's hard. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Often we don't. Thank you. Really quickly, thank you guys in the back there. We always, they always do so much work. Andrew uh, did miracle work um, doing the recital last night and then putting it all back together. So thank you guys. By faith, we go forward. could be here and thank you to the new uh, leaders who are installed today and uh, we just pray that God would continue to be with us all. So here's this benediction. May you experience great joy and love and fullness as you put God first. So go in the love of God, the grace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit today and every day. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Thanks for coming. See you next we will stand. We will stand as